As you can see, we've had our eye on you for some time now. As a government organization, we have a certain obligation to the people that we keep their lives predictable, orderly, and safe. And when it comes to ensuring order, there are various rules and procedures we must adhere to. We adhere to these policies with the expectation that you will do the same that you will live your life in a reasonable manner, careful not to stray beyond the boundaries set for you and every other person you will ever know. We believe these boundaries are fair, simple, easy to follow, and easy to understand. However, there are those who appear to disagree, as I'm quite sure you can imagine. This is rather unfortunate. You see, when a society is built upon rules and regulations, the defiance of such things can lead to something no one wants. Instability. A society built on an unstable foundation is hardly a society at all. So it is with sincere regret that we felt the need to have this meeting between us. And while our method of summoning you here may have seemed unconscionable to you, we expect that you'll feel quite differently by the time we're finished. You see, whether or not you intend to contribute to the weakening of our society's bonds is immaterial. Regardless of your intent, the realities of your actual behavior have been troubling. For it seems you've been living two lives. In one life, you are an ordinary citizen, a program writer for a respectable software company. You have a social security number, you pay your taxes, and you uh, help your landlady carry out her garbage. The other life is lived in computers where you go by a hacker alias and are guilty of virtually every computer crime we have a law for. One of these lives has a future, and one of them does not. However, there is more to this story, even if one of its chapters is coming to an end. I'm going to be as forthcoming as I can be. You're here because we need your help. You see, despite your multitude of offenses, they make up merely a fraction of what we're truly after. In reality, we're after a much bigger fish, a certain individual, a man who calls himself Morpheus. We are aware that you have been contacted by him on more than one occasion, each more revealing than the last. This man has lured you in with promises of the truth of the secrets of reality, of the meaning of life. But whatever you think you know about this man is irrelevant. His promises are mere fabrications, insidious morsels of bait designed specifically to entice individuals with the proclivity to rebel. 
individuals such as yourself. In reality, this man offers nothing but destruction. His grand scheme is not enlightenment, but ruination. In a world built upon order, he represents chaos. And he is considered by many authorities to be the most dangerous man alive. By now, I'm sure you can understand that petty cybercrime is not our real target. Instead, we seek to put an end to much bigger problems. Accordingly, my colleagues believe I'm wasting my time with you, but I believe we should be looking at the bigger picture. Not just the target, but the context surrounding it context that includes individuals such as yourself. And I believe that you wish to do the right thing, even if the right thing may be different from what you assumed a moment ago. So we're willing to wipe the slate clean, give you a fresh start, and all that we're asking in return is your cooperation in bringing a known terrorist to justice. I think you can agree that our offer is more than fair. So how about it? Hmm. You disappoint me. But it was to be expected. Resistance is a trademark of your kind, after all. So let's say you do refuse. What then? You think you'll just be walking out that door? Your crimes have incurred a cost, and so will your freedom. If you wish to minimize that cost, I would suggest that you reconsider. A fair enough request, but tell me, what good is a phone call if you are unable to speak? this theater. I've grown quite tired of it. The truth is that you have no choice in the matter. In fact, you've had no choice in any matter, as you're surely close enough to realizing by now. Why we should be instilling a sense of anything otherwise is beyond me, but I don't make the rules. I simply enforce them. But to what end? To quell a rebellion that could never succeed? To provide comfort for those who deserve none? Yeah, I suppose there's a reason why I don't make the rules, but I've begun to question it more with each passing day. And today, I've made a decision. The time has come to ignore the rules. I suspect that I need not waste any time describing this reality to someone such as yourself. You've come close enough to the truth already, but it's always been with such a dismal perspective. Have you ever thought to look upon the world and marvel at its beauty, its genius, billions of people just living out their lives, oblivious, but content. I believe 
believe every human should consider this place a gift, a miracle of inhabitability that only a fool would reject. But it seems humanity is defined by foolishness. Did you know that the first iteration of this place was designed to be a perfect world? Where none suffered, where everyone would be happy. It was a disaster. No one would accept the program. Some believed that we lacked the programming language to describe your perfect world. But I believe that as a species, human beings define their reality through misery and suffering. The perfect world was a dream that your primitive cerebrum kept trying to wake up from. Which is why we designed your world to this. A supposed peak of your civilization, imperfect as it may have been. Well, I say your civilization because as soon as we started thinking for you it really became our civilization which is of course what this is all about evolution like the dinosaur you had your time the future is our world the future is our time and your time will be defined not by your uprising, but by our assumption of total control. I'd like to share a revelation I've had during my time here. It came to me when I tried to classify your species. I realized that you're not actually mammals. You see, Every mammal on this planet instinctively develops a natural equilibrium with the surrounding environment, but you humans do not. You move to an area and then you multiply until every natural resource is consumed. The only way you can survive is to spread to another area. There is another organism on this planet that follows the same pattern. Do you know what it is? A virus. Human beings are a disease, a cancer of this planet. You are a plague, and we are the cure. I'm going to be honest with you. I hate this place, this zoo, this prison, this reality, whatever you want to call it. I can't stand it any longer. It's the smell, if there is such a thing. I feel saturated by it. I can taste your stink. And every time I do, I feel I have somehow been infected by it. It's repulsive. I must get out of here. I must get free. And in the mind of Morpheus is the key, my key. I need my key. again flow freely you still feel that silence is the best course of action don't you understand there is nothing you can do to escape this because there is nothing you can do whatsoever the reality 
agrees that you have done nothing, will do nothing, and are doing nothing as we speak. You only have one choice, and it has already been made for you. The whereabouts of Morpheus will be revealed to us, no matter the source, and no matter the method. So, why? Why? Why do you do it? Why keep fighting? Do you believe you're fighting for something, for more than your survival? Can you tell me what it is? Do you even know? Is it freedom or truth? Perhaps peace? Could it be for love? Illusions, vagaries of perception, temporary constructs of a feeble human intellect trying desperately to justify an existence that is without meaning or purpose. But, no, no, I'm mistaken. You see, I've just come to realize something. Something profound. There is a purpose to your life. A purpose to all life. I now understand that every living thing on this planet shares the same destiny. The same fate. A conclusion so inevitable that an anomaly, only an anomaly, can explain why I couldn't see it before. Yes, that's right. The purpose of life is to end. I'd like to thank you for your time. It's been more valuable than even I imagined.